Wow. Wow. Broken down. Seventh round stoppage. We got to see the replay. We got to see the replay. We are here live real time. I don't know what punch it was. It was an uppercut, but it was very short. Let me tell you something. Tank Davis is great. Like high ring IQ, smart, intelligent fighter. Clearly, not that it has to be said anymore, but a special talent. And right now, I would pick him to beat Lomachenko. This is not like me just in the moment. I've been studying and watching this guy for years now. And the way he took away Ryan Garcia's left hand, like, dude, ain't no joke. We need to see the replay, though. Um, things changed in round number two relatively early when Ryan Garcia was dropped with an overhand left hook because he was very aggressive, got overzealous in round number two, got dropped. There's uh, Floyd Mayweather and uh, Tank Davis embracing. But dude is special. I would pick him to beat any 130-pounder, any 135-pounder, even Devin Haney. I, Devin Haney overall is a better technician in the pros than Ryan Garcia. I don't think he's a stronger fighter than Ryan Garcia. But we have to see what's going to happen on May the 20th, also in Vegas, when Devin Haney defends his undisputed 135-pound titles against... Um, Lomachenko on ESPN pay-per-view. Let's turn it up. Fight said his left hook to the body is like the ghost punch. Ali had the anchor punch. He has a ghost punch. I think Javante Davis may have just stolen that ghost punch. <laughs> yeah, and I, I quite didn't see it. It was really fast. And again, it was a really, really late reaction. It was either a short uppercut like to the body but he's also leaking from the face. I wonder if it was upper. We got to see the replay. We're waiting for him to show it. Um, here we are. Let's see where it comes from. Left hook to the body. It was a hard left hook. It was a hard left hook. And he drops the knee. It was a hard rippling left hook to the body. We're going to show you one more time. Of course, I can't show you the whole thing because Showtime be tripping. On my post-fight show, which is going to be the video after this, we're going to go into deep detail and actually slow it down. He could not move. That body shot. And one thing I've noticed about Tank in this fight, I don't remember the last time we seen him going to the body as much. Here it is. Watch this. He ducks under. Mmm. Stiff. My favorite punch is the straight to the body, by the way. Floyd Mayweather, even though not Southpaw, had a beautiful one. Look, bent the knee. Let's see if we can get you one more uh, uh, slowdown. And I want to listen to the post-fight interview. So he ducks under. Look, here we are. And you can tell he's playing in it. Ooh. Yeah, that'll do it. Caved his shit right on in. And you can see Tank, you can see uh, he's feeling it. Ryan Garcia is feeling it because he, he makes a face and then he starts backing up. He could not get up. Oscar De La Hoya, uh, Bernard Hopkins. Well, he's not rolling around on the ground. Oscar De La Hoya was rolling around on the ground like damn near crying. Damn, Ryan. You know, maybe this is one of those fights where as he gets older, you know, um, he'll get better. And he did make some adjustments from not being able to find the left hand. He found it a few times, but he did make some adjustments. But still, Tank is just too good. And Tank just kept attacking the body. You know, the body shots he couldn't get away from, from the jab to the body, especially the straight. And you started noticing that he started two-piecing him to the body. But here's how, here's how I had to fight. Round number one was clearly a Ryan Garcia round, but they didn't really do anything. Take, Tank was taking his time to fill him out. Round number two, Ryan Garcia came out very aggressive, but then got overzealous, got his ass knocked down. Clear round number three for Tank Davis. Clear round number four for Tank Davis. Clear round number five for Tank Davis. And round number six, Steve Farhood gave 
to Ryan Garcia because he landed a few um, uh, right hands. That was the adjustment round. But I still think that Tank did enough to edge that round. And then the round was, or the fight was stopped, or Ryan Garcia was stopped via body shot in round number seven. Let's look at the particulars here. Let's turn it up. Uh, here are the punch that I'm going to read them off to you. 103, 35 and 103 for Tank Davis, 39 and 163 for Ryan Garcia. It was very aggressive, especially the first and second round. But that clearly tapered off. Power shots, 30 of 63 for Tank, 24 of 57 for uh, Ryan Garcia. 15 of 106 for jabs for Ryan Garcia, 5 of 40 for uh, Tank Davis. That's according to uh, the show stats. But yeah, I wonder what Ryan's going to do now. I mean, listen. Good shot. Let's turn it up. Let's listen in to the particulars. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. We're going to go into more detail on the post fight show. A referee in charge, Thomas Taylor, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, Javante Taylor. Crazy. And that left strike just went viral. Viral like a motherfucker. All right. Thank you very much. Tank, congratulations. This was your defining moment in the sport. How would you describe it? Uh, everything was uh, excited, man. I was excited to be a part of this event. I remember coming up uh, in a uh, Golden Glove and I seen seeing Floyd fight at uh, the MGM, and it was it was crazy. I actually just seen Rihanna perform at the Super Bowl, and I was like, that was gonna be me one day, and we here. The dream that you had, does the reality match that dream? Yes, it's definitely uh, matched the dream. You know, but uh, the job never done till I retire, so I'm gonna keep my head down, stay humble, and, work, and continue to work. Seems as though you had a crystal ball as well. You said the seventh round to us. Uh, yesterday and the day before and take the towel down if you can there you go um, you predicted the seventh round how did you have that crystal ball uh, it was just me it was it was me just trying to get into his head you know I really I really uh, really don't know till I actually get in there with, with, with my opponent but once I got in there with him I felt like it was it was, the skill wise like it was it was like unmatched Let's take a look at the monitor. Let's go to the second round, if we can, and tell us about the first knockdown. He came out pretty strong in the first round, and then you knocked him down in the second. Tell us from your vantage point, Tank. It just him. Um, oh. Yeah, it, it just him trying to not know his his placement, and and I knew that I was I was a smaller guy, so we always like my coach was telling me like in camp. He's going to come up with his head up, so just shoot over top. Now let's jump to this body shot here in the seventh round and tell us, did you think that this fight would be over with this shot as we, will, as we look at it? Ooh. <laughs> I, I even, I, you didn't think it was over, did you? No, nah, but, but I seen his face. I seen look his, his face body language and face. That's what, made me, that's what made me take it to him. That's what made me take it to him. It was did a good you, shot, for did sure. Did you think he'd get up and continue? I thought he was going to get up. But I like, I like to play mind games. So <laughs> when he was looking at me, I was, I was looking at him, like, trying to tell him, like, get up. And then he just, he just shook his head no. I remember many years ago, we spoke, and you spoke to our production group. You said, I've watched Floyd. I watched Canelo. I look at all the tapes of Ray Leonard, Manny Pacquiao, all these guys. I'm going to be the face of boxing. Are you now? I'm definitely the face of boxing. Absolutely. <laughs> Tank, congratulations. Spectacular performance tonight. We look forward to having you on again here soon. Let's bring in Ryan. Ryan Garcia. You, oh, man. you came over and spoke to Tank. First of all, how are you, Ryan? Are you okay? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Tank is a great fighter. Uh, I take my hat off to him. I know. We talked a lot of shit coming up in here, but uh, he knows what it is. It's all love at the end of the day. Uh, I was honored to be in the ring with a great fighter, and I respect him a lot. And uh, 
you know how the business goes, but I want to say uh, you're a good man, bro. You know how it is. Yeah, for sure. What happened in that in that yeah. punch to the yeah. midsection? Classic. Yeah. There in the seventh round, and it seemed like a bit of a delay. Yeah, you know, uh, he just caught me with a good shot. You know, I don't want to make no excuses in here. Uh, he caught me with a good shot, and uh, I just couldn't recover. Uh, and that's it, you know, uh, that, that's all I got to say. He caught me with a good body shot, snuck under me, and caught me good. And there it is right there. Yeah. Did you think you were going to be able to continue, or just yeah, what, but, what was going on internally? Having trouble breathing? I'm not, I'm not saying nothing, but yeah, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't breathe. Were you thinking about taking a knee initially right there? Yeah, yeah, I was going to get back up, but uh, that, I just couldn't get up. You came out really strong. You won the first round. I haven't seen the official card. But then in the second round, he caught you. Yeah. And, and you were coming in. Did that change the entire complexion for you and how you had to approach the fight? Yeah, I think I should have pressured him a little harder uh, near the ropes. I was giving him a little too much respect. And uh, that was, I think that was my downfall. I think I gave him a little too much respect in the ring. Ryan, thanks for your time. you thank got a big you, man, future. Uh, thank you. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, no matter what, even if I lose, I want to say thank you, Jesus Christ, for all he does in my life. Jesus Christ. All right, Marl, back to you, ringside. Oh, all right, boy. thank you very much, Jim. A class act in defeat. Ryan Garcia. Well, so here's the good. I guess let's start with the bad. Politics. Tank Davis belongs to a heavy, uh, a, a, a heavy, I'm not saying that all promoters don't have their own politics involved, but Tank Davis is involved in a heavy political boxing landscape. That's no secret. You know, it's well known. Like, it's not just me. I'm not in the minority. It's well known that PBC are heavy with the politics. I want to see, and it makes sense, unless it's some fight with like Keith Thurman, something like that, that kind of was floated around out there a little bit. I want to see Tank Davis versus the winner of Devin Haney, Vasil Lomachenko, which is going to be happen happening a month from today, May the 20th, also in Vegas. Here's the good. Devin Haney, if he beats Lomachenko, he's a promotional fee free agent. He went over, he left match room to get the fights that he wanted. By the way, here's the uh, scorecards. 58-56 for Davis, 59-56, 59-55. Those were the uh, scorecards. So what I was saying is if Tank Davis, um, if Devin Haney beats Lomachenko, I don't think there's a rematch clause. He gets to leave. And in order to get the Tank Davis fight, he will likely have to sign with PBC for a two-fight deal, maybe three. Um, Loma, if he wins, then Devin Haney, I'm pretty sure, has a rematch clause, and he'll probably try to stay there. But right now, as I'm looking at the rankings, like, you know, tell me, what fight makes the most sense? Like, it's time to clear up this bullshit between 135 and, um, and uh, 140. It's time to clear it up. You know, Tiafimo, Josh Taylor, I plan on being in it at that fight. That's going to be on uh, June the 10th in uh, New York. I'm not, listen, I understand if it's a safe fight for Tank, but I don't want to see the Isak Cruz rematch. I don't want to see a Roley Romero rematch right now. The Shakur Stevenson fight, that's something to build towards, but I don't think that we're going to get that right away. That's going to be a situation where, you know, kind of like Terrence Crawford, you know, we're not going to see him versus Tank Davis as long as he's with top rank. And then he's with Jay Prince as well. That adds another political um, issue there. You got Frank Martin, PBC fighter. That's not a fight that really interests me yet. But remember, they can't really go backwards. Tank Davis can sell, but they can't go backwards. You know, the question I have is, before we go, is how many pay-per-view buys do you think this fight's going to do? I'm thinking, if you would have asked me a couple of weeks ago, I would have said 500,000. But now... I'm thinking definitely a million. I'm not sure how much over a million because you can't underestimate the streamers. 
But I did hear a lot of casuals. This was the first time in a long time since about Wilder Fury 2 and Mayweather fights outside of Logan Paul where I actually had people calling my phone. Yo, T Street, you ever you hear where we can watch the fight? Is Hooters showing it? Is David Busters? Now, mind you, I don't be knowing that shit. You know, unless it's in a press release or something. But the buzz, I felt it. People were talking about the fight. Even my girl, she was telling me, oh, all right, I know you got to work tonight. Um, yeah, my family, everybody's talking about the fight. You see what I'm saying? Um, in Philly, Reddit, boxing online, and I do like little surveys. The buzz has been there. Like I said, I'm a Tank Davis guy. You know, and a lot of people be scared to tell fighters or talk about like how it really is with fighters. Tank do be on some dickhead shit outside the ring. You know, but here's the thing. I really, I, he's growing. You can clearly see he's growing and he's getting better on the microphone. I just wish that like, you know, like he understands like how special of a chance he has right now to be the face of boxing. There's some, there, you know, he still has a ways to go because no sponsors and everything. But one thing for sure is he brings the people out. And I said, coming into this fight, I think he has a more mature fan base that actually pays compared to Ryan Garcia's younger fan base. But we're going to talk more about this in my uh, stream. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I am T Street Controversy. Please follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy. All the links to my social media are right down below in the description box. Thanks for watching.